next speaker up is Rose Jang. I think I see her coming this way. Uh, her talk is, The Future is Breaking All the Rules. <laughs> okay, hi, I'm Rose. Um, I have a Twitter, it's Rosamond Cotton. My name isn't actually Rosamond, it's all lies. Um, and I also have a comedy blog, which is whoseroses.wordpress.com. These things will become relevant later on. Uh, today I'm going to question the often unwritten rules that govern our lives and what might happen if we broke some of those rules. In the movie Pirates of the Caribbean, Elizabeth Swan requests parley from the pirate captain Barbosa. Later in the movie, he reneges on his agreement with her, and when she accuses him of breaking the pirate code, he replies that the code isn't so much hard and fast rules, it's more like guidelines. Although I'm a law-abiding citizen, I do wish that we could be more flexible in our society. But I want to focus today not so much on laws, but on everyday life and on the habits we get ourselves into and the innovation and creativity we're missing out on uh, because of this rigidity in the way that we do things. Today I'll look at how we are restricting ourselves in our everyday lives. Um, I'll give you some examples from my own life of how I have gone against the traditional way of doing things um, and had some really great things happen because of it. And I will envision what the future might look like if we let go of some of our self-imposed restraints and allow flexibility and innovation to reign. Human knowledge on almost every subject is increasing exponentially, yet change is slow to come, leaving us stuck with inadequate and antiquated systems, from our schools to the way that we look for jobs. We all notice that these systems are broken, or at least that the conventional way of doing things isn't the only way and may not even be the best way, yet most of the time we do nothing and the systems remain the same. Why do we put up with these inadequate systems? The truth is we don't have to. I was lucky enough to attend Esquimalt High School here in town for grades 9 through 12. I was in the challenge program and in French immersion. I think there's a lot of things wrong with our schooling system, but today I'm going to focus on one of the things that Esquimalt High did right for me. When I was in grade 9, I took Math 10, Francais Langue 12, and Information Technology 11, in addition to regular grade 9 classes. In grade 10, I took regular grade 10 classes, and I took Math 11, Francais Langue 12, and History 12. In grade 11, I took math 12 and writing 12, and by grade 12, I had taken all but one of the classes I needed to graduate, so I went backwards, and I took psychology 11 and graphic arts 11. And I didn't skip a year of math and two years of français langue because I'm smarter than the other students. I skipped them because Escramont High let me, and they even encouraged me to do so, along with some of my friends. I've since spoken to friends who went to different high schools, and they were always amazed by the flexibility that was in my schedule. It should go without saying that people learn at different rates and they learn different things at different rates. And Esquimalt High made it possible for me to not waste my time in classes that were too easy for me. <coughs> we have this mindset that because you're in grade 9, you need to take grade 9 classes. But luckily, Esquimalt High saw that that rule was self-imposed and there was nothing stopping me from taking classes in another grade. And in fact, Esquimalt High's flexibility stretches even further. If you look at my official transcript of grades, there's two classes on it that I never took. Uh, I skipped the class, but I needed it to fulfill the ministry's graduation requirements, so I just made up a mark and they put it on my transcript. <laughs> we don't even notice most of the rules that we let govern our lives. We might um, want to obey the school rules or not, uh, or the company policy, but there are myriad unwritten rules that we follow as well. For example, who says that when you're applying for a job, you have to email or hand deliver your cover letter and your resume to your prospective employer? Who says you even have to directly send that employer your application? After graduating from Esquimalt High School in 2008, I went to UVic for a year and a half. Then I went to Melbourne, Australia for a term on exchange with UVic, where I got massively into the comedy scene and I saw 44 shows at the 2010 Melbourne Comedy Festival. As of last September, I'm at Camosun College where I'm in my first year at the Applied Communications program and every student in this program is required to do a media-related internship after their first year, so for me that's this summer. Realistically, I figured I'd probably do my internship at CFUV where I have um, volunteered for the past three years or somewhere else in town where I have ties. 
Um, but even before the school year started, I had a dream internship in mind, one that I could never get. But you have to dream big. That's how I got to Australia. What I wanted to do was to work at the Just for Laughs Comedy Festival in Montreal. But an internet search for Just for Laughs internships turned up nothing, so I decided to take the initiative, and in early December, I sent Just for Laughs an email. I never heard back. But two days later, I saw a tweet looking for digital marketing interns at Just for Laughs. This was exactly what I wanted to do. So the end of the posting said something very interesting. It said, what should candidates include in their applications to stand out? Surprise me. How to apply. You can be as creative as you want. It's 2010 and there are many ways to reach me. I figured this was a digital marketing internship. Clearly, I would need to use digital marketing to get the job. So over the weekend, I came up with a plan and by Monday, it was in effect. This is social media, after all. It works fast. So I wrote a blog post on my comedy blog that was essentially a public cover letter and I posted it to Twitter. I also wrote a Facebook note asking friends and coworkers to comment on the blog post with testimonials and to tweet at Parissa Foster, the Just for Laughs Director of Digital Marketing. And this was great. I was like, it doesn't even matter whether I get this internship or not. This is so much flattery. It was pretty sweet. Uh, and so by the end of the day, there were half a dozen comments on the blog post, and then the next day there were more. And it even, even being tweeted about by complete strangers, which was so cool. I have no idea who these people are. Uh, and by Wednesday, Parissa had made contact. And on Friday, a week after the posting went up, I spoke to her on Skype. I thought it was going to be an interview, but the first thing she said was, when can you start? It all felt way too easy. It came together so quickly, and I never even sent Parissa my application. I don't think I did something particularly innovative in using my blog and Facebook and Twitter to get this internship, but by being proactive, I was the first person in my class to get one. The truth is, most people are so stuck in the traditional way of doing things, we not only don't move forward as a society, but we bore ourselves as we go. Who wants to go through a whole pile of resumes that are all exactly the same? It doesn't have to be like this, and we need to give ourselves permission as a society to, to relax these mores and allow for greater flexibility in all aspects of our lives. What ideas are we missing out on by making people work Monday to Friday, 9 to 5? What creativity is being lost by sitting kids in desks day in and day out, organized solely by their age? We let patterns and mores rule our lives without even realizing that we're doing so. Why have I never bought certain foods at the grocery store? Uh, why do I only wear certain types of clothing? Why am I presenting this speech with a PowerPoint accompaniment? Somewhere in my mind, I know that there are other options out there, yet most of the time I stick with the same food, the same clothes, and the same PowerPoint presentation as every other time. I want to challenge myself, and I want to challenge you, to critically consider the habits that dominate your life, some of which are pretty obvious and some less so. The next time you sit down to do a task that you've done a hundred times, try to come up with a creative way to make this time a little bit different. Or a lot different works too. And next time you're in a situation where you're about to give a rote response, see if you can be flexible. If you're a teacher, let students take whatever classes they like, regardless of the grade. If you're applying for a job, do something more engaging than sending a cover letter and resume. And if you're an employer, encourage people to get creative with their applications. There's no hard and fast rule that you need to submit a resume to get a job. What other guidelines are we treating as rules? If we let the concept of rules go, we will discover a lot more flexibility in our lives and pave the way for a lot more innovation. Wow.